Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a first look video where we're diving into Isotope Ozone 8. So this just came out, and it's a great update. I'm super pumped about it. There are some great, great new features. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at those new features while kind of mastering a track. The reason I say kind of is it's not going to, you know, I don't want this to be like a 30, 40 minute video. I want to be about 10, maybe tops 12. And we're going to be, yeah, just using some of the new tools to reference my demo from Coda to an actual track and see if we can get this thing bumping. So let's just start. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is obviously the interface is a little bit different. Um, if you click on the plus to look at the different modules, you'll know that you'll notice, or you may, you may not, if, you, if you're not, if, uh, if you just kind of gloss over them, there's a new module, it's the Spectral Shaper. So what this does is it uses a really high resolution uh, spectral imager to attenuate problematic frequencies is I believe how the manual describes it. So it's not compression, it's not multi-man compression, or it's not, you know, dynamic EQ. It's a little bit different. And we're going to use it in this video to maybe tame a sub or tame a hi-hat depending on my mix. So just wanted to point that out right off the bat. Now, another really interesting feature is the reference tab down here. So you can load up reference tracks directly into Ozone now. And I've already done that, and I'm going to be using uh, San Holo's I Still See Your Face. You'll notice that it says .mp3. For all you purists out there, yes, I use an mp3. I know I should use a, a wave, but what are you going to do? Didn't have a wave. So um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing this to this Coda demo, right? And the features inside of Ozone 8's reference module are great. You can use multiple file formats. You can do mp3, uh, wave, AIF. Uh, there's a few, there's a couple more. You can't do M4A, but there's probably about five, maybe six that you can use. So it makes it quite flexible. Now you'll, I already did it, but you'll see it. If you haven't done it just as a little plus, you hit add, navigate to your, to your file and you're good to go. Now, the interesting thing here is that you can easily create different sections of the song to play, right? So I manually created this, this bar to this bar in region B. It kind of just did its own thing, right? Now, the reason I did that is I want to compare the drop of this song to the drop of my demo. And I don't want to compare the intro of Son Holo's I Still See Your Face to my drop. Now, up here you have a spectrum. So uh, let's just play it real quick. You'll see what I mean. So that's, that's uh, Son Holo's, right? And then this is mine. So you can just bounce back and forth, and you can see on the spectrum you know, that which one's which, and you can see there's a, quite a bit of difference right now between the two. So that's really interesting, and I, I really like that you have that. Now, I've turned down the gain on Son Holo's because I gave myself about negative six decibels, seven, maybe around negative seven even, of headroom, so it wouldn't be fair to my ears. My ears would get all tricked out and be like, oh, crap, my mix is terrible. So you do have that gain compensation slider that you can use. All right, let's look at the next feature that kind of plays hand in hand with, hand in hand with this. And that's the master assistant tool. So this kind of brings in technology from Neutron into the ozone world. So what this will do is it will essentially create a custom preset based on your track. It's actually going to listen to your track, which I love because I kind of sit on the fence sometimes about presets when it comes to mixing and plugins like EQ and compression, just because there's so many variables, variables that go involved to a track, like say a vocalist. Let's say you have a male vocal track and you load up an EQ and you load up male vocal, right? Well, the variables could be what microphone you recorded on. Did, was it compressor, dynamic, was it ribbon? Was the singer a, a bass, baritone, you know, you know alto? Um, there's tenor, there's so many different variables that go into it. Do you have a really nasty, noisy AC, low rumble hum? So it's kind of hit or miss, right? That's what I love about this idea of the software actually listening to your track to give you a more focused starting point. So let's try it out. There's a few different op options. You have streaming, CD and reference. Um, I'm going to do streaming because that's how I consume most of, of the music that I listen to. So we're going to hit next. And now it's going to want you to play it. So let me cancel real quick because I have a reference on. I want to make sure that I'm not playing the reference. All right, streaming again, hit next. And just let's listen.
All right, so let's hit accept and see what Ozone suggests. So we have four different modules. We have the equalizer. We have dynamics. We have dynamic EQ. Dynamics are turned off as well. And we have maximizer. So it gave us kind of essentially just a really quick starting point. Now let's bypass and kind of AB the raw mix to what Ozone gave us. All right, so it's a little bit louder, but not too crazy effect. It's quite tame, right? So I'm going to go into my maximizer, and I'm going to change it to the new mode. There's a new mode that is the uh, IRCLL for low latency. So I love that there's a low latency mode because you guys have asked me a few times on my videos why I don't use Ozone on my master bus because you'll see that I mix with it sometimes. And the answer to that is latency with the video. So you'll probably see Ozone 8 on my master bus a lot more in the videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, we're gonna turn this, let's turn the LUFS threshold down a little bit. And let's hit learn. All right, so you can just hear that the volume just went up and this is gonna be really loud right now. So let's turn that off. So now that's a big difference in volume. Right, now let's, the reason I wanted to get up there is I'm assuming the San Holo track is going to be, uh, it's, RMS is going to be probably around negative five, negative four. So I wanted mine to be around there so it's kind of an even comparison. So let's listen to the reference real quick. Best to see your face. Best to see your face. So his is still a little bit, little bit louder. So let's turn the, th the threshold down just a little bit. And let's do some other things now. So we looked at the reference, pulled in a reference track, looked at the master assistant. Now let's actually go and kind of look at some of the new features while we're mastering this track real quick. So I'm going to load in that spectral shaper. I'm going to pop it in first, because like I said, this is going to attenuate problematic frequency. So I don't like my snare right now. Now I should go back to the mix and turn it down, but let's try seeing if there's a preset for snares. Let's try balancing the snare and see what happens. I'm going to set it to light. So yeah, like I said, this spectral shaper is a really cool tool to kind of pair with, obviously, things like dynamic EQ, uh, and obviously equalization, right? So the EQ didn't really do a whole lot in mine. It actually turned down some of the highs. I'm going to bring those back just a little bit, and I'm going to boost kind of the mid-highs just ever so slightly. So I'm going to load in one more module, and that's going to be the Imager. Isotope's Imager I've, I've always loved. We're going to tighten up the mono compatibility here. So speaking of that, you can really easily monitor your tracks in mono. So let's go and take this band one, make it a little bit more narrow. I'm going to dial this in because I want that pluck to be a little bit more wide and in your face. So I'm going to make this a little bit more narrow to give more of this band, the pluck sound. Let's widen that a little. And for all my dog listeners out there, we'll turn the band four up. Right, so this little switch right here toggles back and forth between stereo and mono, which is great because you can check your mono compatibility on your master bus or your mix or your track, which is click of a button, which I really like. 
speaking of this little area over here, there's some new features. Um, obviously, there's reference. There's You guys have always said, if you guys are Ozone users, you'll be familiar with the gain match. But there's up here, if you click I.O., there are a bunch of new, well, not probably a bunch, but about four, it looks like, I think, uh, maybe five new metering options, which is really nice. So I have it on RMS and peak right now. So what that means is it's telling my peak up here, my RMS down here. So there were some A, B comparisons with Ozone 8 off and with it on. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.